Okay, we are recording. This is Cheryl DiGirolamo, your New England Region President for 2020, welcoming you to Mastermind Mondays. And we're going to get started right away because we have a very special, special guest today. And who's going to introduce her? Nora? Kelly? So good morning, Cheryl. Great to see everybody here from the New England region of the Residential Real Estate Council. Nora and I are your hosts for Mastermind Monday. And, you know, we, we develop the content based on what we hear from you, the member. So if there is something that you need info on or that you want to learn about, please let us know. So this week, we're super excited to be bringing, you know, you asked for some info on YouTube. Um, Nora, I think we've totally delivered. Why don't you tell them who our guest speaker is? So our guest speaker is Katie Lance. Of, and she's also this wonderful book. So I have to tell you, oh, <laughs> how about the front of the book? That would help. Um, and also the uh, Get Social Smart Academy. I'm a, full disclosure, I'm a member and I was at her first mastermind retreat, which was amazing and was a game changer for me. So let me read quickly her bio because I want you to get going straight away, Katie. But you are the CEO and co-founder of Katie Lance Consulting, and she's nationally a keynote speaker at conferences and events. I'm sure many of us on this call and listening have heard her speak. And for the past 10 years, Katie has been working with real estate agents and brokers to help them get smarter about how to use social media to grow their business. Her specialty is in helping real estate agents and brokers achieve big results using social media without spending a ton of money or time, <laughs> really <laughs> you have time in there, but money too. Um, she is also the author of the best-selling book, Get Social Smart, and the founder of Get Social Smart Academy. Katie has been named one of the most 100 influential people in real estate by Inman News and is a frequent contributor to Huffington Post. And she lives in the San Francisco Bay Area with her husband, Paul, and two awesome, beautiful boys who I love following her on social media too. So Katie, um, I can't say anything more, but just glowing things, the content that you provide on a daily, weekly basis in your weekly mastermind calls, which starts, I think, in half an hour after this call, <laughs> I'll try and get on to that one at one o'clock Eastern time. Take it away. You're going to help us uh, learn about YouTube and maybe how to repurpose and that YouTube piece of it. So thanks. Yeah. Kate. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me, Nora. Thank you for facilitating this and, and, and inviting me to be here. And I just so appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here and, and to, to teach and to chat uh, for, for a few minutes here today. So I'm going to just go ahead and dive right in because we had, that was a beautiful introduction. So I so appreciate that. Let's see if I can just, I'm going to try to share my screen here. Let's see if I have the ability to do that. It says I don't, so <laughs> there might be a setting. <laughs> I don't necessarily have to, but it would be good to, sh to see if I could. Let's see. Okay, Cheryl, on. To oh, here we go. Co-host, there we go. There we go. I'm. I'm now the. Ooh, I've got the power. Now I'm the co-host. All right. <laughs> All right. So I wanted to, um, you know, as as Nora mentioned, I want to talk about obviously YouTube and repurposing. And I thought for our time together, I wanted to just. I figured I would just kind of share with you three big tips, kind of three big things that we're saying that are making a really big difference when it terms comes to putting together a social media strategy. And of course, YouTube is a huge part of that. YouTube has helped build our business and our academy members' business in a really, really big way. Part of that is because when it comes to YouTube, YouTube is the number two search engine in the world. It's owned by Google. Uh, and YouTube is, uh, it's a little bit of its own beast. It's a, it's a little bit different than, than Facebook and Instagram and, and LinkedIn and, and some of the other social platforms. So um, I'm excited to just kind of dive in. I'm going to give you guys lots of tips and, and I'll put my contact info at the end and I'm happy to connect with any of you who are watching who want more information or maybe you're curious about the Academy. Uh, we'll, we'll touch on that briefly at the end as well. So the first one, first big thing I just want to share with you that is really making a big difference with the folks that we work with in our academy, like Nora, and so many of the great people we work with is time blocking. And I can tell you that, you know, if you are thinking about putting together a strategy when it comes to YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or anything that you're thinking about, I can tell you from experience, time blocking is kind of the name of the game. So we recommend, especially for social media, setting aside at least a few minutes every day and then a little bit of time every week. So part of social media in my mind is not just what you're posting, what you're saying, it's also taking time to engage with other people, right? Uh, and it's that relationship building piece of it that makes a really big difference. So 
we recommend setting aside at least five or 10 minutes every morning. I do this every morning with my cup of coffee. I'm still on coffee time. It's still morning time in California. So we'll set aside a few minutes every morning. And I love to, to do what's called focus five, where I pick five people that I'm going to scroll through my feed uh, and, and try to really intentionally connect with them. Not just be a drive-by liker, but take a few minutes to comment, engage. Maybe it's their birthday. Wish them a happy birthday. Respond to all my comments if I've been tagged in something. And that that you know engagement that makes a really really big difference to especially when you're trying to keep in touch with people in an authentic way i also recommend time blocking some time weekly we usually set aside at least 30 to 60 minutes a week to schedule some content i wouldn't say schedule everything but schedule some content uh, we also are a big believer in batch content this is a huge thing when it comes to video especially for youtube i always say if i'm going to sit down do my hair and makeup and record one video i might as well sit down and record like three or four so uh whether you're again whether we're talking about youtube or any other kind of uh channel batching can, can make a really, really big difference. I'm also a big believer in a printed calendar. I love a digital calendar, but there's something when you're planning about like pen and paper. So I actually have a link on the screen here. Calendarlabs.com is a great free resource. If you're just looking, you know, we are at the halfway point of the year, which is crazy. Uh, 2020, I know was not quite the year we all expected, but we're going to finish big the second half of the year. So that's a, that's a great free resource I wanted to share with you guys. And one of the reasons I wanted to start with that particular um, slide here today is because when it comes to content, again, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, whatever, it's all about relationships. And we know this real estate's a relationship business. Relationships are built with these small, tiny interactions over the course of time. Every like, every comment, every share adds up. So just would encourage you as you're thinking about your strategy, content's a big piece of it, but the other piece of it is taking time to connect with people, maybe even take the online and offline. You know, you see it's someone's birthday and instead of just posting on their Facebook page, you actually call them, right? Or <laughs> reach out to them, um, you know, through texting or whatever it might be. The second big tip I wanted to share with you, and this definitely goes hand in hand with what we believe in when it comes to YouTube, is this idea of creating a pillar content plan that you can commit to each and every month. So what's pillar content? Pillar content is something that usually takes a little time, money, energy, it's valuable information. It's in your voice, uh, with your opinion, with your expertise. It's not canned. It's not boring. We find the most effective pillar content typically is video, whether it's recorded video on YouTube, recorded video that you put up on Facebook. Could be Facebook Live, though. Could be podcast content. But that original content we think is so, so important because as much as I love Facebook and even YouTube and all these other channels, they're all rented ground, right? They're all rented properties. We don't own any of them. So I'm a huge believer in just building up your content library, especially with video content. Uh, and that, that's such a great way to attract the people you wanna work with. The leads you get from great content are so much better. I can tell you from experience that when you put out great content, especially on YouTube over the course of time, you'll get people who call you, email you, text you, message you, and they'll say things like, I see you everywhere. I feel like I know you. <laughs> I feel like you're in my head. And those kind of people, when they're ready to work with you, they're ready to work with you. You know, they're not shopping around calling 12 different realtors, which basically leads me to this next piece, which means, uh, which is that, what does it feel like to work with you? You know, one of the biggest business reasons to get on camera and to get over the fear of what do I look like? What do I sound like? Which we all have is this idea of, it's not just content for the sake of content. I mean, we're inundated with content and information. It's the layer of your personality, your opinion, and here's the good news. You're not going to be everybody's cup of tea <laughs> and that's okay. Right. Uh, and I think when we lean into our opinions, we have, you know, a little bit of a, we add in our personality, of course, in a respectful way, it's one of the, it's one of the best ways we can really attract the people that we, that we really, really want to work with. So my third tip with all of this is, you know, we've talked about time blocking. We've talked about creating a pillar content plan. The third thing I'd really recommend you think about is looking at your distribution plan for that pillar content. So maybe you're thinking about this going, okay, I'm going to put out a video each and every week or maybe each and every month. So it's not just putting it up on YouTube and hoping, hoping we'll get a bunch of views, right? Most people will put a video up on YouTube and get two views, five views. One of them is your mom, right? So how do we, how do we maximize that? It really comes down to distribution. So I'm going to take a second and talk a little bit about that. Um, there's a couple things when it comes to distribution. The first is batching your content, as I said. So having a plan when it comes to content. I love, uh, you know, thinking about themes like Fun Friday, Market Update Monday, Throwback Thursday, Wednesday Wisdom. When we start to kind of get into these themes with content, it makes it a lot easier to repurpose and to kind of slice and dice our content. 
right? So a video that goes up on YouTube could also get uploaded over on Facebook. It could also get shared over on Instagram. It could get promoted into an email newsletter. It could get shared on an Instagram story today and maybe an Instagram story in three days. It could get turned into a LinkedIn blog post. Like we could really kind of repurpose it in a, in a really smart way. And it goes back to what, I, what Nora said in the very beginning when she introduced me, you know, our philosophy is how do you work uh, smarter, not just harder? How can you take one piece of content and turn it into like 10 different posts versus always thinking, what am I supposed to post today? And I know I'm talking really fast. I've had a lot of coffee and I'm, <laughs> I want to get a lot in. <laughs> um, oops, hold on, let me go back one slide here real quick. So I actually have a really good graphic here that's going to show you guys um, what I'm kind of talking about as far as repurposing. So again, kind of this idea of your pillar content, whether it's written, whether it's video, whether it's Facebook Live, and then thinking about how you can kind of slice and dice that into maybe, again, a post today on Facebook, a post in a few days on Facebook, share something on a YouTube, email. I think the big mistake a lot of people make is they create a piece of content like a great video, they put it up on YouTube or Facebook, and that's it, right? And then they're like, oh, well, I did video, but I didn't get a whole lot of traction, right? You kind of have to be your own best promoter. And what I find with content is typically the best type of content that's going to give you the, the greatest amount of uh, legs, so to speak, is content that's evergreen. So it's valuable today, but it's, it's also valuable three, six, 12 months from now. And for any, any of you listening who may have never done this before, I just want to encourage you to think about the questions you get asked all the time. If you can start to think about the questions you get asked all the time, the topics you talk about when it comes to your clients, you might even think about the last five or 10 clients you've worked with, write them down, and then write down the topics and conversations that came up from working with those clients or even prospects. And you know, very quickly, you could easily probably come up with a list of 10, 15, 20 content ideas that could turn into 10, 15, 20 videos. And I was actually sharing this in our Get Social Smart Academy over the weekend. I said, part of the benefit of, of creating video, especially over on YouTube, is, you know, it's a, YouTube's obviously, obviously, like I said, a great search engine. People can find you. But it's also really powerful when I'm having email conversations one-to-one -one with our clients or people inside of our academy. And they'll email me and they'll say, hey, they have a question about X, Y, and Z. And I answer them. And then I can also say, hey, by the way, I also have this video and this video on YouTube about that. And imagine you doing the same thing. You've got someone who comes to you and they're a first time home buyer. Or they're trying to figure out if, when, you know, when they should, you know, buy that second property or, uh, you know, they're thinking of selling in three months and you can answer their question and then say, Hey, in addition, I also have this video and this video <laughs> that might be really helpful. It just helps to establish yourself as that leader, right? As that, as that leader in your, in your market. So let me look at the time here. I know I have like two more minutes. Okay. <laughs> The other thing I want to share with you, some of you may have never seen this before. This is kind of an oldie but goodie, but, but anyone who is watching who is maybe like at the beginning stages of social media, I wanted to share this link. Um, it's a content grid that we created a number of years ago. Uh, if you go to katielance.com forward slash content grid, it's a free download. You just put your name and email in and we'll send you this PDF. And basically it's a spreadsheet with about 30 content ideas. So if you've ever thought to yourself, like, I don't know what to say, I don't know what to create, I don't know what to post, you can use this. We've done all the work for you. <laughs> so basically you can print it out. And when you're sitting down trying to figure out what to post or schedule, you've got some ideas uh, in terms of content. So I wanted to share that with you guys here. Um, okay, a couple other things here in terms of creating a content plan. Again, kind of starts with brainstorming, right? Thinking about what, what questions you get, you get asked all the time. You can also go to Google if you're stuck on content ideas. You know how when you type into Google, like, uh, you know, how to do dot, 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 you'll see lots of different things that pull, that pull up. So you might start to search, you know, uh, moving to Boston, right? Moving to New England. You might start to do that with Google and see what other things are people Googling? What other, what other topics are coming up? And you might get some inspiration that way. I talked about repurposing. That's a huge, huge thing to think about in terms of your content, especially for YouTube or any, um, any content. And then Asana and Trello I have listed here. For those of you a little bit more advanced, um, I would encourage you to think about using a project management platform to help yourself get organized. We use Asana, uh, especially when you start to bring on maybe an assistant or maybe you've got a video editor you wanna work with. Like you start to bring extra people to kind of help maybe with, with some of the pieces we're talking about. When it goes beyond just you and you have someone else <laughs> that you're working with, having a tool like Asana or Trello can just really keep you organized. They've got um, free services. There's a paid version as well, but the free version is really great also. So at the end of the day, this is sort of the business reason behind everything we're talking about today. People do business with people they know, like, and trust and relate to, right? And I think now more than ever, as our world starts to open back up a little bit, our world is a lot different. And, you know, I don't necessarily think we're going back to quote unquote 
normal uh, as, as we were in the past for maybe some time. So as we, you know, just kind of think about this whole, whole new normal, I think now more than ever, it's a time to really get on video, get on camera, start really thinking about our content in a, in a really smart way. So that being said, um, for those of you who maybe have heard me before and you've thought about working with me or what that would look like, I just want to share with you two quick links. We actually have a challenge coming up in like two days, which is exciting. So if you're listening to this going, okay, I'd like to get a handle on my <laughs> social media strategy. Uh, we have a July challenge. Uh, it's katielance.com forward slash July challenge uh, that you can check out. And then we also have our academy, as Nora mentioned. So our Get Social Smart Academy is our, is our on-demand uh, sort of 24-7 membership site where once you're a member, you have access to all of our training and courses and coaching. If you're part of our academy, you're also, uh, you also get, to, get to be a part of our challenge as well. So uh, both of those links are on the screen there and just would encourage you to, to check those out. You know, like I said, if, you're, if you've been kind of thinking like, gosh, I really need to take things to the next level. We just found, yes, there's a lot of free content out there. There's a lot of free training, but sometimes, I don't know how you guys feel, but sometimes when you just really need to figure something out, you just want to go to the right person <laughs> to figure it out. And, you know, it's sort of the difference between like going to WebMD and trying to diagnose yourself versus just going to the right doctor. So we try to be the right doctor <laughs> when it comes to uh, social media strategy. I've also got my uh, email up there and my social handle is Katie Lance just about everywhere. So you can always reach out to me directly. So all right, that being said, I'd love to open up to questions, see if we have any questions. Um, and then okay, uh, and go from there. There is a couple of questions here in the chat. Noor and I are going to go back and forth here and have a great conversation with you, hopefully bring some more great inspiration to our members. Um, Cheryl would like to know, what topics do you think get the most views if we start with the pillar content? Yes, good question. So um, typically, the, there's two types of videos that, that tend to work really well. One is like location related. So something like moving to whatever your town is or you know uh, moving to this town or this town so anything sort of like moving to your specific town neighborhood the more specific you can get the better if you're going to say moving to boston that's sort of a huge right huge market so the, the more niche you can you can get the better um so moving to and then how to so you know how to become a first-time home buyer how to declutter how to stage your house how to find a realtor how to find a lender like those how to's those are the things people tend to are typically googling and they uh, uh in terms of youtube those are kind of the two that i would recommend Good okay question. and then i just have to give a shout out to one of your ambassadors katie katie clancy <laughs> Oh, hi, Katie Clancy. Right and she says, do it, guys. Being dialed in with Katie Lance has been foundational in my success. She who markets best or he wins. <laughs> so um, just wanted to give, I think, uh, Katie, that you're still here. So um, then she, all, Katie Clancy also had a question that she put in the chat. Uh, where do you like to create the original videos, i.e. I've used Photo Booth, my phone, et cetera. Amen to project manager um, management, like what you were mentioned, Trello and Asana. Um, there ends up being a lot of uh, dots to connect when you get your video content rolling. So Yeah, absolutely. So our video content sort of has sort of evolved over the years, and I usually get you know, kind of asked about equipment and things like that. I honestly recommend just keeping it really simple. Um, you know, like having a simple setup that you can, like a repeatable setup. Like I know Katie Clancy does a lot of her videos, like right on her couch, she's got a simple setup that she can easily repeat over and over. Um, we have, you know, we've, we have evolved to actually now having like lights and mics and, you know, a professional camera. But when you first start, you don't need all that. I mean, most, when I first started my first 99 videos, I shot with my iPhone and this is my fancy new iPhone. I had an iPhone six plus for, I don't know how long. And I shot like a hundred videos just using my iPhone six and like a $20 tripod. So, you know, I would say, keep it simple. Uh, you know, if you don't have a light, just face a window. Like right now I'm facing a, a nice window. So I've got a lot of natural light. You can always throw on a little pair of earbuds with a little mic if you want a little bit of sound, uh, sound quality, but I think just, just keeping it simple. If you make it too complicated, then you're not gonna do it, you know? So then we kind of suffer from analysis paralysis. So um, Katie, I got a quick question for you. You know, if people are putting the videos on their YouTube channel and they're organizing them, mm -hmm. do you find it's better that each one has a different cover that relates to the content or is it better to have a common cover on all of them? So, as, I think it's it's important to have a unique cover for each one. Um, those they're based, they're called like thumbnails. So having a unique thumbnail for each one is I think really important. Um, and that's actually a really good point. When you upload your videos to YouTube, YouTube and Facebook does this too, where it it just picks like a 
it just picks a, a random thumbnail for you. And it's typically like the worst one, right? Like your mouth's half open. Mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's awful. So yes, I, re I recommend creating a custom thumbnail. I like to go to Canva. If you go to canva.com, there's a YouTube thumbnail template and you could just kind of create, like use that as like your own sort of base. And then every time you've got a video, like if you go to our YouTube channel, the thumbnails look very consistent because we're basically just kind of changing out the picture, changing out the text. But if you look at it, it's very kind of cohesive. So you're not like reinventing the wheel every single time. Uh, but yeah, that thumbnail does make a big difference because when you share the YouTube link to, you know, LinkedIn or anywhere else, that's what's going to pop up. That's, okay. it's, that, it's like that featured image on a, um, on a link. Um, I actually had a question. How long would you recommend the videos to be? I know it's different platforms and all that, but in general. Yeah, I would say at least three minutes, like three to five minutes is kind of the sweet spot. Some of our videos go longer, like seven or eight minutes, uh, but typically like three to five minutes, which it kind of hits the mark for, fa for Facebook and YouTube because Facebook prefers videos that are over three minutes, at least right now, that could change, <laughs> but at least right now, that's what they prefer. And that, it, that tends to work really well for YouTube. So um, generally three to five minutes. And then what kind of video software for editing, just basic editing, would you recommend? Yeah, so if you are, if you are a um, Apple user, iMovie is pretty great. A lot of people really like that. Um, there's also a, a product called Wii Video, just Wii, W-E, and then Video, Wii Video, um, which is like a, a cloud-based platform. So basically, you can access it anywhere. Uh, that's a really great one. If you're just editing on your phone, one of my favorite apps is an app called Video Shop, Video Shop. Um, there's a free version, there's a paid version, but that will allow you to do just really simple editing on your phone if you just don't want to deal with editing on your computer. <laughs> and I had, now of course I can't think of it, but when, I cannot think of the name, but for having scripts being in front of your phone, do you have a script? Teleprompter. Yeah, you, yeah, there's actually an app called Teleprompter that I've used in the past. Um, I kind of have a little bit of a love-hate <laughs> relationship with it. it. It takes practice. It's not necessarily easy and intuitive if you've never done it before. It's, you know, I, you, I give a whole new credit to, to uh, you know, journalists and broadcasters who use teleprompters all day long because there's a little bit of an art form in how fast or how slow you, you do it. But that is a good app. If you're going to use any app for that, I recommend that. Um, I, I would recommend, though, that you probably try not to do it. You know, I just find that it, it comes across a little bit more authentically if you can just talk into the camera, which I know it, it takes a little bit of practice to do. So one quick tip I would say is just think about what, what it is that you're going to talk about ahead of time. Your first few bit videos should be something that you could talk about like the back of your hand, right? Something you're just really passionate about or something you're super comfortable about. That'll just make it easier to talk without feeling like, what am I going to say, right? Um, I also just usually anytime I do a video, I just have like a post-it note with just a couple of little bullet points. So in case I lose my train of thought, I can just look down real right. quick and, you know, find, find that. So. Um, so do you recommend captioning on the bottom of the videos or? Yeah, I find that captioning actually makes more of a difference on um, Facebook than YouTube for whatever reason. I don't know why, but it seems to make a bigger difference. Uh, but for all of our captioning, we use rev.com, just rev.com, rev.com. It's a great service. Basically, you take your video, you send it to rev, and you pay about a dollar a minute for a subtitle file. Um, and they're, they're, it's human transcribed, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> and so, you know, we'll send a three minute video, we pay three bucks, and then in an hour or two, they'll send us a subtitle file that we can use for YouTube or, or Facebook. And also Rev will transcribe your video. So a lot of our videos and podcasts, we will transcribe because then we turn them into blog posts. And it's another way to repurpose our video content. And Katie, I know you have a podcast too. Can you speak a little bit about that and how maybe you integrate that with YouTube or not? Yeah, absolutely. So we launched our podcast about a year ago. It's just, it's just called the Katie Lance podcast. So it's very easy to find. <laughs> we're on all, you know, we're on iTunes and all the, all the places to find podcasts. Um, and we kind of wanted our podcast to be different than our YouTube channel. So our YouTube is really strictly social media. It's tips, tools, you know, tricks, strategies. Um, and our podcast is a little bit more of sort of the behind the scenes of our business. And um, I talk about things like being a mom and I do some interviews with people and I've, I've talked to, uh, chatted with people about, you know, their books that they've written. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's definitely some social media stuff, but it's also business related stuff um, as well. And I, we actually made the decision not to put the podcast content on YouTube. I, I really wanted to kind of sort of keep it, keep it separate, but um, just because I felt like it was two different types of content. 
but we still have a whole distribution plan for our podcast. So we don't just put the podcast on iTunes. You know, we share it in a variety of places. We will repurpose it. We put it up on our blog. We put it on Instagram, Facebook, things like that. So um, yeah, it's, 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 it's been great. I think it's been great to have, to add that extra layer. And we didn't add doing a podcast um, until we had been doing our YouTube channel, I think for like two or three years. So, you know, anytime you add a major piece of content, it's a big shift in like your strategy and your time and making sure, you know, you've got the bandwidth to do it. And can I ask a couple other questions, Kelly? Interrupt yeah. me if there are some coming through, but I don't see any yeah, right I now. Do, I do have one question. Um, first of all, Nora, this is awesome. Like, Katie, <laughs> you are amazing. I feel like I'm looking at the clock saying, oh my God, are we going to make it? But <laughs> you are totally bringing it. Um, we've had this wild week, Nora, myself, I know Lisa was on it as well, um, with Tony Robbins. So it's all about the raw, real human and you are totally bringing it. But there are some of the questions that are out here and Cheryl wants to know, she's really excited about what you're bringing here. She wants to join your academy. What is the membership cost and how does she join? Absolutely. Yes. So our membership, we're actually running a special through the month of June. It's normally 97 a month or 970 for the year. Uh, but if you sign up during the month of June, so I think we have a couple days left <laughs> for June. Uh, it's just katielance.com slash academy. Uh, and the uh, special pricing for June is 67 a month. And you can go month to month. There's no contract and cancel anytime. Or it's 670 for the year. Um, and either way, again, there's no contract. You can cancel anytime. Um, and once you become a member, what happens is we will email you a username and password, and then you can log in immediately to your account. And it's a lot like Netflix. So once you become a member, you can access everything. You can look at all of our videos, all of our co courses, coaching, and then you all also have access to a private members group that, that Nora was talking about. So we have a private members group on Facebook where I do weekly, I do a weekly coffee with Katie <laughs> every Monday. So uh, if you like this style, this is something we do in our academy every single week as well. So um, yeah, feel free to check that out. And then also um, Cheryl, if you have any questions or if anyone's listening and they have questions about the academy, you can also just email me directly. I answer all my own email and I'm happy to answer any questions um, just to see if it's a good fit for you and your business. If the email is on the screen there, it's just katie at katielance.com. Awesome. Um, Katie, thank you so very, very much. Um, you know, we're all about education here at the Residential Real Estate Council. And, you know, our members are tuning in from their cars. Marie, we see you. Um, <laughs> and nobody wanted to miss you. And so um, we're very excited to be able to record these every week. And, you know, for anybody who knows me that would love this content, they can also see it on our Facebook page as well as our YouTube page. Um, Nora, this is amazing. We are about to go into week 12. So next week is July 6th. We will not be here on Mastermind Monday because we're all going to pretend like we've got this big social life and maybe celebrate the 4th of July, you know? <laughs> um, so I guess we will all be socially smart and do it social distancing. <laughs> Following up on July 13th, I like to call her Tusky My Tacky. And Jen Tusky from Illinois is going to be joining us. Um, anybody that went to celebration, you would have seen Jen Tusky take the stage. Three Google apps I can't live without. Um, following up from her on July 20th, we have Sarah Gustafson, who is a CRS from Holden, Massachusetts. And Sarah is the pro when it comes to BNI network and how can you get business? So BNI has changed, you know, as they socially distance, it's not, you know, meeting for coffee in a coffee shop at 7 a.m. And Sarah's <laughs> going to show us how it's being done. And then, drum roll, ladies, are you ready? <laughs> I just booked on July 27th the divorce expert. And when I say that, I know a few people here know what name's going to follow it. From California, we are bringing Laurel Starks to Mastermind Monday. So Laurel Starks is the divorce real estate expert. She's the founder of the Divorce Real Estate Institute. Um, and she is nationally recognized as an expert in divorce real estate and also is the author of The House Matters. So we work very hard every week for you guys. And if there's something that you want to see here on Mastermind Monday, Nora, do you have any closing remarks you want to make here? So, of course, I'm just saying to Katie on the chat, thank you so much. This has been such a delight, just jam-packed with information. 
and I just can't tell you how appreciative we are that you're able to come on here on a Monday just before your mastermind call at, <laughs> you know, Get Social Smart Academy call, I should say, at one o'clock. So Thank I'll be you. on that one. Thank you. I, <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me again. And thank you all for, for being here today. I, I love it. You guys are, you guys are a fired up group. I love it. It's a great way to start my day. <laughs> oh, thank yes. you so much. Right on time, 1230. You, everyone, so awesome. Thank you so much for coming and tuning in. We will post this within the next 12 hours on our Facebook accounts. And again, thank you very much, Katie. I, I look forward to being your student. Oh, thank you so much. Have a great day. We'll thank see you, you guys. Bye-bye.